It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at Windows ACM Auto Color Management. This is a feature which people have been asking me to look at for a little while now. It was introduced in Insider Builds of Windows 11, preview builds, that kind of thing, but it was more widely distributed with the Windows 24H2 update. I'm not going to give a detailed look at the feature and everything it does. This is really just to focus on the colour gamut side and the effect it has there. The monitor I'm using here, as it's the MSI MAG321CUP. The exact model isn't entirely relevant, except that this is a wide gamut monitor. It has a gamut which runs quite a bit beyond sRGB. Now, I've got an article on the website all about sRGB emulation, which is linked to in the video description. And that covers this topic in more detail, and it covers ways in which you can achieve sRGB emulation, and ACM is one of those ways. The reason you might want to do this is that most applications are designed with the sRGB color space in mind under SDR, which is where ACM actually does something. And if you're using an unrestricted wide gamut on the monitor, then things are going to be presented with extra vibrancy and extra saturation. And that's what I'm looking at now. Now, some people like this. It is a choice, which is why I was slightly alarmed when I found out that some people were reporting that Windows ACM is actually enabled by default now. That isn't something that really should be done. If people have a wide gamut monitor, there should really be a certain expectation of strong vibrancy and saturation using that full wide gamut of the monitor, even if it's for sRGB content. And reviewers like me, they might talk about sRGB emulation modes, which you would use on the monitor, and that will clamp the gamut closer to sRGB, tone down the saturation. But that's something you're aware of. You'll be aware that you've activated that. I've just enabled some scaling on this monitor because it is a 4K UHD monitor and things are going to be really tiny looking in the video if I don't. So where do you find ACM anyway? You go to Display Settings, Color Profile, so just press the little arrow there. And this is listing a lot of profiles because I've got lots installed on my system, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And then you can see the feature here. You could have seen it before if I scrolled down anyway, but the features here, Color Management, Automatically Manage Color for Apps. And it says there, Auto Color Management, make sure your apps and other content have accurate colors on this display. This may use more power. That The power usage is probably really more of a concern for laptops, although I suppose it does give you an extra degree of processing, but I haven't noticed any difference on my system in that respect. But anyway, it might be switched on by default, and my system happened to be switched off by default, so I'll just turn it on now. And as I'm just looking at my desktop wallpaper here, this is the general desktop environment here. I'm not using a color managed application. I can see that it has applied sRGB emulation. It's clamping the gamut close to sRGB. So I chose this particular wallpaper which is a nice red maple leaf. And that's because on this monitor, reds are particularly fiery using the native gamut. And there's a noticeable toning down, which will show up in the video. Obviously, you're not seeing exactly what I can see. You're just seeing your own screen. But you should see a relative change anyway in the video with it disabled versus enabled. So for reference, again, that is with ACM disabled using the full native gamut of the monitor now. And that is with ACM enabled, which restricts to sRGB. Now, when I say it restricts to sRGB, it does depend if the program you're using is specifically designed with the ACM architecture in mind, so to speak, then it could be clamping to other color spaces. But in most cases, it's going to be clamping to sRGB. This would also include when you're running games under SDR. And incidentally, I've just turned on HDR on the monitor and in Windows. And it does actually just say there, color display is already managed automatically when HDR is turned on. This setting applies when HDR is turned off. So it's only for SDR, not for HDR. So the image here shows the color gamut under various conditions on this monitor, which I'm testing at the moment. So the MSI MAG321 CUP, the native gamut, is shown in the top left. So I recorded 90% DCI-P3 coverage. That means there's a lot of extension beyond sRGB. If you use the sRGB emulation mode of the monitor, that's shown in the top right there, then it cuts that down to 98% sRGB coverage. There's a little bit of over coverage towards the red corner, but nothing massive. In the bottom left, that shows the monitor using a setting on the monitor which will give the full native gamut, but with ACM active in Windows. So it now has 96% sRGB coverage. So that's a little bit different to the sRGB setting. It doesn't really give any over coverage this time, which is good, but there is more under coverage. Not a huge amount, but still not absolutely ideal. And the actual gamut that will be achieved when you're using ACM will depend on your monitor. It reads the EDID, the Extended Display Identification Data, and that's the same data which is used by the NVIDIA no video sRGB tool, which I talk about in that article, and also the AMD driver toggle, incidentally. Anyway, this will be closer to 100% sRGB on some models than others. I've tested this kind of clamping behavior on many monitors before, and they sort of vary between about 95% coverage to 
100%, but usually they fall somewhere between 96 to 98%. So this is really quite expected performance for such a clamp. And on the bottom right there, that shows what happens if you use ACM, if you have sRGB mode enabled on the monitor. So I'm using the sRGB emulation setting on the monitor and I've applied ACM. So I'm basically double clamping and this causes huge undersaturation, 84% sRGB coverage now, which is not good at all. And certainly the monitor is capable of more than that. So as you can see, if you're not aware that ACM is in use, it is problematic because you might not know the feature exists. And then in most cases, it's gonna be clamping to sRGB. So you're gonna be just on the desktop or playing a game. And a lot of the time, you're gonna be just observing, oh, things just don't look as saturated or as vibrant as I was expecting. And you might be one of those clued up people who is aware of the feature. And hopefully as you've got this far in the video, you will be aware of it. But the other issue is, regardless of what its default state may be on your system, on or off, or if you've even checked that to make sure it's off, and indeed it is off on my system at the moment. Interestingly, it gives that little thing about HDR at the bottom, although my system's no longer running in HDR. So maybe you just have to turn on HDR once and it becomes aware that you have an HDR capable display and just gives you that as information for that. Anyway, it's off. But if you go into NVIDIA control panel or change the settings in a different way with the new NVIDIA app, I'm not sure if you can actually change these particular settings with the app yet, but anyway, if you were to switch over to use NVIDIA color settings, which is a common thing people do tend to do because they like to select the highest bit depth on the monitor. If you selected 10 bits per channel or whatever is the highest listed, you'll find ACM turns itself on. So just be aware of that. Turn it off again. I mean, it's easy enough to toggle off again, but you have to be aware that it's doing this. Another thing to be aware of is that with ACM, as I mentioned before, if programs are specifically designed with the ACM pipeline in mind, then they could be using a wider gamut than sRGB. And if you've got a wider gamut monitor, you might think, well, that's useful. That's good to have. And yeah, it could be. But the problem is that the EDID data that has some inaccuracies for sRGB, it also has some inaccuracies for Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, and various other gamuts. It's just generalized information, which isn't specific to your unit. And even for a particular model, there are sometimes inaccuracies. But that's why people use ICC profiles. They'll actually read the gamut of the monitor and the corrections made will be specific to your system, to your unit, and things can just be refined in a proper way. And this is how things have really been done for a long time. It's been the standard. If you have ACM in use, it changes how ICC profiles are used, which parts of them are used. So I'm just going to enable this profile. It's not for this monitor, but you should see there's a change in gamma and color temperature with it applied versus not applied. With ACM active, which I've just done now, the profile again does make changes, changes gamma and some changes to the color temperature as well. What it doesn't do is it doesn't do complete transformations. It doesn't have gamut mapping for color aware applications or ICC aware applications. So to get around that, a little bit of a workaround, if you go to a program's property, so you're right clicking on an executable for Chrome in my case, I found it on my system, went on chrome.exe, right clicked, then went on the properties, go to compatibility. There's a little checkbox there, use legacy display ICC color management. If you do that, it won't be using ACM's data for the gamut and it will actually use your profile, which is hopefully more accurate and specific to your unit. And you do have to do this with every program where you really want to use the corrections. So you want the gamut mapping from the profile rather than the generic EDID data being used. So in summary, the ACM feature, I think it's a nice feature. I'm glad to see they've included it because it is nice to have a useful way to easily clamp the gamut to sRGB but I don't like that they've enabled it by default. And many people will be unaware of the setting existing in the first place. And also I don't like the way it switches itself on if you change the bit depth in NVIDIA control panel. And I think that would also apply on the AMD side, although I don't have an AMD GPU available at the moment. And I also don't think it's wonderful that it really just overwrites ICC profiles. I prefer if it was a little bit more intelligent and it worked out that you had a profile activated. And if you're then using an ICC aware application, it would, just let the profile do its thing instead of trying to take over and make its own adjustments. So I really see this setting as a bit of a double-edged sword.